Hello, I am the guest star today to teach you on the topic of molecular genetics. Uh, today's lesson, I will cover basically the structure of DNA and generally the relationship between DNA genes and chromosomes. If you have any questions, you can ask your own biology teacher. If not, you can also email me. My email is found on every page of my PowerPoint slides. I guess before we begin, I should uh, introduce my special guest. Hey. So special guest is, hey, attention, be good children. Don't waste time in class. Or if you're at home, stay away from humans and don't spread disease. All right. Okay. Uh, molecular genetics itself is actually quite a complex topic, but a very interesting one. One of the first things you will learn when you are covering the topic of molecular genetics is the structure of DNA. Uh, DNA is a very complex molecule. It's actually made up of many different chemicals and chemicals are made up of uh, atoms. And because of this complexity at the O levels, normally what we will do is uh, we will study the structure of DNA uh, through either building models or just looking at models in order to understand it better. Ultimately, DNA itself as a chemical is really too small. We are unable to even use the most powerful microscope to see the exact structure of DNA. So a lot of it was uh, through various experiments that scientists did in the past to deduce the structure. Okay, uh, unfortunately, you are not in my class, so you don't get to build a candy DNA model. Maybe your bio teacher let you build one. But the next few slides shows you how if you on your own, uh, can also build a model, a DNA model that is actually made up of candy. My suggestion, do not eat your model until you are done building it. If not, again, it's like you have a partial understanding of everything. Okay, so uh, as we learn about DNA, uh, every slide you will learn a few new facts, some keywords, and these keywords are important eventually when you have to write your essay or answer structured questions. So fact number one, DNA itself is a large molecule, but ultimately large molecules are made up of smaller uh, building blocks. Um, a scientific term for building block would be subunit. So the building block or the subunit of your DNA molecule is also known as a nucleotide. A nucleotide itself can be subdivided into uh, three smaller components. So if you look at the slides, okay, there are three components. Um, a Coke bottle, you don't call it Coke bottle in real life. In reality, it's actually a phosphate group. It is covalently bonded, shown by the toothpick, to a five-sided sugar known as a deoxyribose sugar. And if you are building your model, the marshmallow will represent the sugar. Um, you are not expected to spell or call the sugar deoxyribose sugar, it is sufficient at the O-levels to simply refer to it as a sugar molecule. Okay, and then the last component in your nucleotide is a base. So uh, it's represented by a gummy bear, green color one, over here in this slide. The reality of it is, okay, uh, nucleotides, the subunits of DNA, actually, uh, are made up of four different nucleotides. How are they different? Ultimately, each of the nucleotide has their own phosphate, uh, sugar, and nitrogenous base. But the difference, why we have four different uh, nucleotides is because actually uh, there are four different kinds of nitrogenous bases that you can find in the nucleotide. So for example, when you build this model, 
your candy DNA model, the Coke bottle is the same, the marshmallow is the same. But when you look at the gummy bear, you notice the gummy bear comes in different colors. So the different colors of your gummy bears actually represent just the different bases. Okay, and there are four bases that you can find in a DNA molecule. You must remember the name. Adenine, capital letter A. Thymine, capital letter T. Guanine, capital letter G. Cytosine, capital letter C. Must you know how to spell the bases? Yes. Okay. So because there are four bases, basically there are also, therefore, four different kinds of nucleotides because the four nucleotides have the four different bases. Uh, nucleotides are subunits and if you understand the concept of subunits and if you've been studying chemistry and polymerization, basically subunits will polymerize together. Okay, polymerization is just a sciencey term whereby your subunits join together to form a larger molecule. So in this case, my subunit is the nucleotide. When it polymerizes or joins together to form a larger molecule, this larger molecule is also known as a polynucleotide. So over here, you will see a single polynucleotide. It consists of basically many uh, individual nucleotides that are chemically joined to each other. When I say chemically joined to each other, they are joined together by strong covalent bonds. So if you build your candy DNA model, you will see that the toothpick really uh, pierces into uh, each marshmallow and each Coke bottle continuously. So that represents the strong covalent bonds that will eventually form your polynucleotide. All right, uh, have you heard of this term? Normally, we call it the rules, complementary rules, rules of complementary base pairing. So as stated previously, there are four different uh, bases or nitrogenous bases that you can find in your nucleotides. A for adenine, it always pairs with T, which stands for thymine, complementary base pairing. Then you have C, for cytosine, it only pairs with G, guanine. Okay, and this is what we call the rules of base pairing. Uh, it will not pair in any other way, like the comic. Okay, so T will only pair with A, C will only pair with G. If it's the other way, it is not. they will not be able to pair with each other. And why am I telling you the base pairing rules? Because ultimately, in a DNA molecule, when you walk the helix DNA bridge at the Marina Bay Sands, or even when people describe the general shape of a DNA molecule, they always like to use the term double helix. But what does it mean by DNA has is a double helix? So the term itself, double, uh, gives you a hint that actually a DNA molecule consists of not one, but it actually consists of two polynucleotide strands. So if you see in the picture, previously we built a single polynucleotide strand, but in a DNA molecule, because it's a double helix, there actually should be two polynucleotide strands. But in the polynucleotide strands that is in the partner, how do you know what is the uh, partnering uh, nucleotide or part, uh, complementary base? So back to the rules of base pairing. So if you look closely, if I examine the first polynucleotide strand, the first nitrogenous base is adenine. So therefore, the partner polynucleotide strand okay, should contain uh, thymine as the base. Okay, then the second one, we have thymine. So then you have adenine. So rules of base pairing, T, A, G, guanine will only pair with cytosine. Cytosine will only pair with guanine. Okay, so when you have your second polynucleotide chain that you build in your candy DNA model, uh, you need to make sure that the base that you add as the opposite strand uh, follows the rules of base pairing. And actually, one more thing that if 
if you are very sharp, you might also notice okay, the direction of, let's say, your phosphate. So if you look at the nucleotides, polynucleotide strand on the left-hand side, you see that the phosphate is, in a way, pointing upwards. Given the oxygen in the sugar molecule is like an upwards facing. But when you look at the partner strand, the polynucleotide strand, you notice the phosphate is upside down. So it's like the oxygen. So it's like a parallel, but uh, upside down. So this is what we call anti-parallel. So uh, more correctly, we should always say that the polynucleotide chain, okay, the two polynucleotide chains are arranged in an anti-parallel direction. Okay, so it's parallel, but anti-parallel. So you can see, uh, even in the DNA model, in the candy model, so the phosphate on the left-hand side is at the top. Then the complementary strand, the phosphate points downwards. So parallel, but actually anti-parallel. Okay, and in reality, your two polynucleotide strands, they twist together to form a double helix. So that's how we get the term double helix. All right. So uh, structure of DNA. So again, this is just a model. Uh, you can see this image in textbooks. DNA is a double helix. Ultimately, if you unwind it, you can see the structures a little bit better. As stated previously, because a DNA molecule consists of two polynucleotide strands, that's why we call it a double helix, but the two polynucleotide strands are anti-parallel. So parallel but anti-parallel. Additionally, recap, the subunit of DNA molecules is also known as your nucleotide. There are four different nucleotides because there are four different kinds of uh, nitrogenous bases. So A, C, G, T. And they always follow the rules of base pairing. So when you take a look at uh, this one here, okay, this DNA uh, model that has been unwind every time there is a guanine on one side then there will be a complementary base pairing rule cytosine on the other side okay thymine on one side then adenine on one side okay so we always follow the rules of base pairing uh, base pairing occurs through weak bonds known as hydrogen bonds technically it's not in your syllabus so you don't need to worry too much about it okay uh, just remember the base pairs, okay, they always follow the base pairing rules. Adenine pairs with thymine, cytosine pairs with guanine. Nucleotide is the subunit. So some fact sheets. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. What is the function of DNA? Ultimately, we, this is a very general definition. It carries the genetic code. Uh, the idea is that it contains genetic information that controls or tells, directs the cell to make uh, different kinds of proteins. What exactly is that? Mm, when you go study biotechnology in the poly, uh, you will get to know that better. All right. Um, let's watch this video. It tells you about the structure of DNA. DNA contains two strands of building blocks called nucleotides, arranged like a spiral staircase. Each nucleotide includes three parts, a phosphate group, a sugar molecule, and one of four bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine. The sugar phosphate bonds form the double backbone of the molecule the handrails of the staircase. But we find the genetic key to DNA in the steps of this stairway, the nitrogen-containing bases. These bases link up using hydrogen bonds in a very specific way. Adenine will bond only with thymine, A to T. Cytosine only bonds with guanine, C to G. While these basic pairings never change, the order of the pairs along each strand varies greatly from one species to the next. In this elegant design, 
we see how nature stores the instructions to build all living things. Okay, hope it was loud enough. All right, so uh, five marks, six marks at the O levels, you are required to write an essay normally describing the structure of the DNA molecule. And I guess for combined science, pure biology, it's always commonly tested. But before you can write, I guess, a long essay, you first need to be able to identify keywords that you want to include in your essay. So after I said so much, are you able to identify some keywords? Nucleotide, phosphate, sugar, base, polynucleotide, double helix, anti-parallel, ATCG, must spell all of it, the complementary base pairing rules, even hydrogen bonds, not on the syllabus. You can write about it if you want. Okay, so I will read it to you because um, I'm not sure if you are going to write it, but if you had to write it, if not, you can take a photo of a screen capture, okay, of uh, the general, I would say, model answer to the structure of DNA. DNA is in the shape of a double helix. Ultimately, it's because it's made up of uh, two polynucleotide strands okay, wrapped around each other. The subunit of the DNA molecule is known as the nucleotide. Each nucleotide itself has uh, three subcomponents, a phosphate group, a five-sided uh, sugar, and a nitrogenous base. So ultimately, these subunits known as nucleotides when they polymerize or when they join together the larger molecule form is also known as a polynucleotide um, within a dna molecule it actually is made up of two polynucleotide strands and these two strands are arranged in an anti-parallel direction okay um, there are four bases adenine a thymine t cytosine c and guanine G. Oh, I didn't put the G at the end. Okay, but that's a G. So adenine binds with thymine, guanine binds to cytosine. Okay, and this is like uh, maybe seven points. I suggest you write all, even if it's a five mark question. Okay, and this one is extra information, but it's good to understand the history of science. So who is this lady you are looking at? She's one of the really famous uh, scientists. I think if you ask any of your biology teachers, they should be able to recognize her and probably tell you the story of her. Okay, She's called Rosalind Franklin. Uh, she's famous. Back then, she actually worked uh, in a lab where she did this science, science procedure protocol called X-ray crystallography. So this means uh, working with uh, radiation, so chemicals that emit radiation uh, in order to study structures of different, different biological molecules, including the structure of DNA. Um, back then, they did not really respect or understand the concept of lab safety. So I think a lot of times when she was working with her radioactive materials, she didn't protect herself sufficiently. That's why lab safety nowadays is actually very important. So eventually she did die quite early of cancer and I would think it's likely because of exposure to radiation. So anyway, why is she uh, so famous? So together with her PhD student, Okay, they together with a PhD student, they actually uh, use X-ray crystallography. So you see in the caption, a PhD student, they managed to take this photo and it's a very famous photo. They call it uh, photo 51. And when you look at it, it doesn't seem like much. Okay, but you can see that X shape, right? This is actually the view of your actual DNA molecule from the top view. So you are seeing all these like individual lines within the X shape. It's actually 
showing the position of the bases, how they stack on top of each other. And because of this X shape, it actually gives the idea that your DNA molecule is a double helix made up of uh, two polynucleotide strands. Back then, okay, it was really a race to discover the structure of DNA. So uh, these two, Watson, seated, Crick standing up, together with another man called uh, Maurice Wilkins, they were awarded the Nobel Prize for the discovery of the structure of DNA. So over here, Watson and Crick, they are standing next to their DNA model, again model, so it's not the actual molecule that they built. Um, back then it was a race because there was another competitor lab they were competing to see who could discover the structure of dna first so their competitor was actually this other scientist called linus pauling he was famous because actually before this he already won two nobel prizes one of them was the nobel prize in uh, discovering the structure of uh, protein molecules so wow he could uh, understand protein molecule structure so he was also now aiming to discover the structure of dna his second uh, nobel prize was just a nobel peace prize so unfortunately uh, linus pauling the competitor his hypothesis was dna molecules were made up of like a triple helix so like three polynucleotide strands he didn't have the chance to actually see the photo 51 which was taken by rosalind franklin only Watson and Crick saw it. That's why Watson and Crick actually proposed this double helix model. Yeah, so this is like a pencil sketch based on whatever information they got. So eventually they successfully uh, did come up with the double helix model for the structure of DNA and they, will, they were awarded the Nobel Prize. Well, for Roslyn Franklin herself, uh, she was not awarded the prize because I think by then when they did announce the prize, she was again died early because of uh, radiation. So she was not awarded the prize, uh, unfortunate. All right, so uh, if you are lucky, Okay, you have gone to the bio lab and done a DNA extraction. So this is a take home message. DNA itself is a chemical molecule. It can be found inside the nucleus of all cells. Okay, and strawberries have large amounts of DNA. That's why we choose the strawberry as the specimen for your DNA extraction. And if done well, okay, you see the photo, you will be able to actually extract large amounts of this white substance, which is just uh, DNA from your strawberry. Okay, so actually before I end off, this part is, is where students don't understand, but actually it's very easy to understand. Okay, so the relationship between DNA genes and chromosomes. I will explain this slowly and you will definitely understand it. Where do you find chromosomes? Chromosomes, if you look at it, you see this is the X-shaped structure. Normally, you find them inside the nucleus of, uh, I would say, all, most cells. Red blood cells have no nucleus. All cells with uh, nucleus, nuclei, you will find chromosomes. But what exactly is a chromosome made up of? A chromosome is only made up of, generally speaking, two main chemicals. What are the two chemicals? If you can understand that and you can answer that, actually life is very easy. Okay, so take a look. Uh. So this is a chromosome. My question to you is, what are chromosomes made up of? What are the two chemicals that chromosomes are made up of? Let's watch this video. Actually, there are two. So in this animation, we'll see the remarkable way our DNA is tightly packed up so that six feet of this long molecule fits into the microscopic nucleus of every cell. Okay, uh, the, the, say the, the narration is a bit soft. Okay, so let me repeat this. So what you see here, the pink molecule, the double helix, you are looking at a DNA molecule. Okay, it's a very long strand of DNA molecule. Uh, DNA itself doesn't exist alone. Normally, DNA is wrapped around neatly. You see the purple structures wrapped around neatly around protein molecules okay so you see the dna the pink structure 
is continuously wrapping and organizing itself neatly around these purple colored protein molecules. And it's only these two substances. It's just a matter of wrapping and wrapping. And as it continues to coil up against itself, okay, it will eventually actually form this very compact and condensed looking structures known as your chromosomes. So you can see over here, chromosomes. And chromosomes themselves, okay, you can actually see them at certain times of a cell cycle's lifespan, especially during a cell division. So where are the chromosomes? You can see the wormy, wormy structures there. Yes, those are the chromosomes that uh, at certain points of time are visible under the light microscope. Okay, that one, hard to visualize. Let's watch my favorite video. Chromosomes. So what are chromosomes made up of? What are chromosomes made up of? Those structures. Two things. DNA, single, long strand of DNA wrapped around organizing proteins. These organizing proteins have a name. You call them histone proteins, but don't worry about the name. It's really just a long strand of DNA that is neatly wrapped around organizing proteins okay so again in your syllabus you are expected to outline the relationship between dna genes and chromosomes so chromosomes are found in the nucleus but what are chromosomes chromosomes a single chromosome basically is made up of what did i say a single long strand of dna molecule and it is neatly wrapped around histone proteins. Okay? Here. Chromosomes are found in the nucleus. So DNA is wrapped around proteins. So organizing proteins to form a chromosome. So the chromosome really is just a long strand of DNA wrapped around proteins neatly. I think I've repeated myself many times. Okay, then the next term that you are expected to know is basically when your long strand of DNA in your chromosome, uh, what is that relationship between DNA and genes? So in this image, you can also see over here, they write the word gene and then there is a little bracket. So physically speaking, I'm not talking about function, but physically, a gene can be physically known as a segment of DNA. So it's like a short stretch of DNA. So then, is everything a gene if you, have, if you have DNA? Well, besides being physically a segment, it means a short stretch of DNA. So if you look at this uh, picture here, you have a DNA double helix. And then they have assigned three genes, gene 1, gene 2, and gene 3 in light blue. When we just talk about the physical characteristics of a uh, gene, ultimately it's just a segment of DNA. And because within your chromosome, the DNA itself is very, very long, there can be many, many, many segments of DNA. So this means that within one chromosome with a very long strand of DNA, there can be many genes found along the chromosome. But besides being just a segment of DNA, which is just a physical characteristic, there is a functional uh characteristic of a gene so genes besides being this segment within that segment of dna that segment of dna actually contains genetic information but what kind of genetic information is found in genes it's not just any information it's information that keyword uh, controls the synthesis of a single polypeptide or a protein let me uh explain that point so for example Hemoglobin is the red pigment you find inside your red blood cells. Okay, in case you didn't know, hemoglobin is actually a protein molecule. So then ultimately, the idea is within the human chromosome, there will be a segment of DNA that will be assigned as the hemoglobin gene. So within this segment of DNA known as the hemoglobin gene, the genetic information found within this segment of DNA actually directs the cell or controls the synthesis in particular for the hemoglobin protein. So the idea is for every protein that you can find inside a cell, there should be a appropriate gene okay, that will control its synthesis. Okay, and to end, I guess, today's lesson, 
uh, you need to also understand. So within a segment of DNA, ultimately, what do we mean by genetic information? When we talk about genetic information, information uh, within a DNA molecule is actually stored in the bases, which again doesn't explain much to be very precise. It is the order or arrangement of bases that gives the that is the one that has the genetic information. So let's take a look at this. Okay, cannot see clearly, but let's take a look at this DNA molecule. When I talk about DNA sequence, let's say, for example, one is the DNA sequence of the left polynucleotide. So the one on the left, basically, when I say DNA sequence, I'm just referring to the order or the arrangement of bases. So I'm going to read it to you. G, T, A, C, A, G, T, C, A, C, C. That's what I mean. Okay, the sequence, arrangement, or the order of bases within that segment of DNA. I don't believe? Okay, we can double check the answer. Then I have another question. So then if you have one sequence given to you, are you able to state the complementary sequence? So complementary sequence means the opposite strand with the complementary base pair. So actually, if you look at the molecule, red color G, the complementary sequence is G will pair with C. T will pair with A. Okay, so again, or if you just look at this sequence here, you can deduce based on the rules of complementary base pairing the complementary DNA sequence. Okay, so again, sequence itself just means the arrangement or the order of bases within that segment of DNA. Okay. Different DNA sequence will give you different types of genes and different genes will ultimately control the synthesis of different proteins. So it's a very amazing, diverse, flexible system. Okay, and I guess I will end my lesson here. There are more questions, but I think that's it for now. And have a nice day.